Hello everyone. In the last session, we discussed about the lab finding example. So, in order to understand a lab finding, we are considering a four pole DC machine. It gives the number of turns is 100 and the EMF per turn is 10 volts. Now, the same, same parameters if you are connected in the wave winding, what are the modifications and what are the voltage and current changes? We should discuss that. So for that purpose, just look at here wave winding. So name itself wave winding means always number of parallel paths will be the two. Number of parallel paths will be the two. So that's why the total number of turns can be divided into the two parts. So generally the given number of turns is 100 number of turns is 100 and we have two parallel paths and each parallel path having the turns is equally divided that is one is 500 turns the another one is also the 500 turns understand 500 turns and so it is 500 turns that's why we can simply say that in the example itself, he mentioned EMF per turn is 10 volts. So EMF per turn is the 10 volts. So for, for N1, the EMF in the N1 parallel path, EMF in NL parallel path is 10 volts into so 50. So it is 50-50. So that is 10 into 50. So it will generate 500 volts. So for each, for each parallel path, for each parallel path, generated EMF, generated EMF equal, equal 500 volts. So it will generate 500 volts. So that's why I will take the EMF generated in the this is e, e equal to 500 volts. Okay, same thing. The generated EMF is also the 500 volts. The same thing it will be generated. Okay, and the next thing is what is the current? How much of current will be generated? So generally, just assume that in the each parallel path. The current will be generated is the 20 amps only. So look at here. This will generate the 10 amps and it will generate the 10 amps. So both will be generated the 20 amps. Okay. Therefore, the complete EMF generated across the load will be the, the parallel path voltage. That is EG equal the 500 volts. So this is the EG equal the 500 volts. Okay. So, the total power supplied by this wave winding, we can write like this. The total power, I can write the total power equal generated EMF EG and the armature current. Armature have the two parallel paths and each parallel path will generate the 10 amperes. So, by adding the 10 amperes, the total armature current will be the 20 amps. So, finally, the generated power will be equal to the, I can write, Generative voltage is 500 volts and the generated current is the 20 amps. So the total power will be equal to the 500 kilowatts. So the total power generation is the 500 kilowatts. If you observe the lab finding, the power generation is the power generation, sorry, not 500 into 20, it will become the 10,000 kilowatts, not 500 kilowatts. 500 into 20 it is the 10 kilowatts it's for the wave winding so just observe at the lab winding so this is the lab winding at the lab winding the voltage is also the 10,000 watts it is 10,000 watts not 10,000 kilowatts 10,000 watts are we can directly write it is a 10 kilowatts so power generation from the lab winding as well as wave winding both the cases are the same so power generation in the lap and power generation in the wave winding both the cases will be the same there is no change with that thing and 
just observe here but here in case of lamp winding the voltage will be dumped each so there is the four parallel paths because number of parallel paths equal to parallel paths equal to 4 that's why the number of turns will be divided into four parts 1 2 3 4 parts but here in the wave winding the number of parallel paths is 2 that's why the number of turns will be divided into two parts so in the each part each so that's why it will it will become the 50 turns and again the it will become the 50 turns it will become 50 turns and the, it will become the 50 turns so it will generate the emf of 500 volts but the load requirement is generally it is already fixed that is the 10 kilowatts so for the 10 kilowatts the each parallel path will generate the 10 amps and 10 amps the total will be the 20 amps so that's why the power generated in the lamp winding will be equal to the power generated in the wave winding okay so this is the difference between the lamp winding and the wave winding next is here we can get some important points here that is lap winding is suitable for large current and low voltages just look at here look at the lap winding here the lap winding the current value is 40 amps and voltage value is 250 volts so that's why it is a large current and low voltage the reason is because it has a more number of parallel paths here next is the wave winding for large voltages and low currents how in case of the same power just observe here the voltage is each voltage is 500 volts 500 volts the current value is 20 amps so it is 500 volts and current is 20 amps so that's why always we have to prefer wherever the high current is required we should prefer the lap winding wherever the high voltage is required we should go for the wave winding so depends on the application we will use the which type of winding only okay next we have some re relation between the both lap winding and the wave winding the relation is like this the relation is the generated emf in the lap winding to the to the generated emf in the wave winding equal to like this aw by al aw means a is aw equal so parallel path of parallel paths of wave winding aw is parallel paths of wave winding what is al al is parallel paths of lap winding so always represents it is a parallel path what is el you know that el means generated emf in lap winding generated emf in lap winding next what is ew that is generated emf in wave winding wave winding so here whatever current that is generated current in lap winding it is in lap what is iw that is generated current in the wave winding what is pl there pl is generated uh, power generation in lap winding power generation in the lap winding what is pw here also the power generation in the wave winding wave winding so we have some relation between the lap and wave windings in that lap and wave windings we have voltage current and the power the relation is like this the first relation is so generated emf in lap the ratio of the generated emf lap winding to the generated emf in wave winding will be equal to the parallel paths in wave winding to parallel paths in the lap winding and second ratio is the generate the, the generated current in lap winding and current in wave winding equal to parallel path lap winding by parallel path in wave winding and what is the next relation the next relation is power generated in the lap winding will be equal to the power generated in the wave winding so here the important thing is 
generator emf is inversely proportional to the parallel path this is the important thing the generated emf is inversely proportional to the parallel path parallel path this is the important thing and the current generation will be proportional to the parallel path current generation will be proportional to the parallel path okay the current is proportional to the parallel paths so whenever the parallel path increases means the current generate generation will also be increases right here the same thing that's why this is inversely proportional and that's why it is the similar proportion the important thing is the the power generation in the lab winding will be equal to the power generation in the wave winding okay so this is about the operation of the wave winding example and the relation between the emf current and the parallel paths in the both lab winding and the wave winding okay i hope all of you understand the session thank you